This video is going to start to review area and volume. I'm going to focus entirely on revolution volume, so looking at things that need either the disk method, the washer method, or the shell method. And then the first one is just going to start with area. And what I'm doing with this video is I'm taking the same region and asking you multiple questions about that region, which requires you to do different techniques. This is what you're going to see on an AP test. They are going to have you look at one area and then turn it into a volume problem by revolving it or change something about the problem to, to have different parts. So what we're going to look at is we're looking at the region that has been bounded by y equals 4x and y equals x squared. So I really want to make sure I have an accurate picture since I know I'm going to use this picture many times. And I will draw it many times for each purpose so you can see it. So we know y equals 4x is a line with a slope of 4 that goes through the origin. And we also know that y equals x squared is a parabola that has the vertex at the origin. So really this is a problem that you would not have to have a calculator to get the visual. We are first in the beginning, trying to set up an integral that represents the area that's been enclosed by these two functions. So what we want to start with is figure out where they intersect so we can have boundaries for my integral. So if I do the algebra, I'm going to set them equal to each other. Going to get everything on one side, so x squared minus 4x, and then finally factor out an x, which tells me that they intersect at 0 and at 4. Now when I go to do area, I have two options. If it's in terms of x's, I want to think of it as a top minus bottom, which is what this one is. If it's in terms of y's, then you're going to do something more of a right minus left, and that one's going to be a little tougher to visualize. So this problem is pretty straightforward. Just once the setup, it does not ask for the answer, so I'm not going to do any calculator work here in this video. I'm just going to focus on the setup. My boundaries go from 0 to 4. There is no pi in area. It's really tempting after you do all sorts of days with volume to put pi. There is not pi with area. And then it's just top minus bottom. So in this case, the top curve is your line, so 4x, your bottom curve is your parabola, minus x squared, and this is the final answer for the area piece. Obviously, if you wanted a numeric answer, you could use your calculator. You could even do this one by hand. It wouldn't be too bad. We're going to continue with that same region, but this time the directions are asking you to set up, but don't evaluate. Again, we're not going to go to our calculator. The integral that's going to represent the volume if this region is revolved around the line y equals negative 2. So let's draw another picture so we can see it. And I'm going to try to use a couple colors so it's a little easier for everyone to see. So we're going to draw 4x like this, and I'm going to draw the x squared. I'll put that in blue. So again, the same region. The difference now is the line that I'm revolving it around is negative 2. So I'm going to come down here, create this line, the idea that I'm revolving this, this region around that line. The questions that you should be asking yourself. First, you want to talk about variable. You want to make sure you know which variable to work with so that all, everything, boundaries and the equations are in the right variable. This is going around a horizontal axis. If it's going around a horizontal axis, we want to use x's, then we're going to use either the washer method or the disk method. When you look at your picture, that will tell you whether it is washer or disk. There is a hole. When you revolve this region around that line, there is definitely not just a hole. There's a huge gap right in the middle of the graph. So we definitely want to use the washer method. So I'm going to write that down here so I know which method I'm using. In the washer method, everything should be in x's because I'm going around a horizontal axis. I want to identify my large radius and my small radius, so I'm going to draw them. I'll use a couple different colors. I always start my drawing by putting my pen down on the, what I'm revolving around. Going out, there is my large radius. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my small radius, starting at y equals negative 2. So there are my two radii. When I write my radii, I want to think top minus bottom. So for the big radius, my top curve is the red, the red one, which is 4x. So my large radius is 4x minus the bottom is actually negative 2. So it's going to be 4x minus minus 2, which is a lot easier way to write that is 4x plus 2. Essentially, because I'm revolving around something that's two spaces below the axis, I've actually lengthened each radius by two units. Same thing when I do my small radius. My small radius which I wrote in blue, is top minus bottom. The top is the parabola, so that is x squared. And then minus the bottom, which is negative 2, my large radius is x squared plus 2. My boundaries also need to be in x's. The nice thing is, because you just did the previous slide and already set them equal, you know the boundaries are 0 and 4. Because it is volume, I do need pi out front. It is big radius squared minus small radius squared, so 4x plus 2 squared minus x squared plus 2 squared. 
This is far enough. I do not need to do any simplifying. This has been set up and it's done. The last problem, again using the same region, is asking to take that region and revolve it around the y-axis and determine what volume has been formed. So we'll draw our picture one more time. And we'll talk about options. We have a couple options for this problem. I'll talk you through the options, but then also tell you the option that I think works the best for finding volume. So here is our function 4x. Here is x squared. So again, same region but now I am revolving it around the y-axis. You have a couple choices. If you want to use a washer method, because definitely there's a hole, you cannot do the disk method, because we're going around a vertical axis, I would need to switch everything to y's. It's very doable. You would have to take each equation and rewrite it. So for example, you would have to rewrite this as x equals y over 4, and you would have to rewrite this as x equals the square root of y. You would also have to change your boundaries. They would no longer be 0 and 4 because they would be y boundaries. And you would do big radius minus small radius, which is perfectly fine. There is another option, and that's the last type of revolution volume we learned, which was called the shell method. Now, the shell method is not on the AP test. You do not have to know the shell method to be successful on the AP test, but it definitely makes certain problems easier. And in my opinion, this is one of those problems that it makes easier. So I'm going to walk you through this problem using the shell method. If you want to also do it using the washer method, you should get the same answer. Now, granted, when we're only setting it up, we're not going to get those numeric answers to compare. But when you are getting a final answer, they would be the same. So with my shell method, where they write down your basic equation, it is 2 pi. And this is the equation that we wrote in class, p of x times h of x, boundaries a to b. This is if it is in a has a vertical axis revolution, you use x's. So that's what makes this one actually preferred to be done using the shell method, because it allows me to keep everything in x's. It allows me to keep the boundaries the same as what I've been working with, and it really takes a lot of the switching around away from us. So with this particular problem, my boundaries, since I'm staying in x's, are still 0 and 4, since I'm allowed to keep it in x's. My p of x, we talked about this in class, they get really technical in some of the books. Really, the focus should be, if you're revolving around the axis, then your p of x is just the variable that you are working with. So I'm working with x's, my p of x is just x. If I'm revolving around a different line, let's say I'm revolving around the line x equals 2, then my p of x is actually going to be 2 minus x. It's going to be the line minus the variable you're in terms of. And again, you can get really complicated into explaining why this works. I'd much rather you just understand that that's the easiest way to find p. You do not need the picture for it. To find h, however, the picture is important. The idea is that h is the height of one cylinder that you could draw. When you draw your cylinder, you want to draw it parallel to what you're revolving around. So here's an example of a height of a cylinder. So you can kind of think of it, we talked in class, like you have this one little cylinder that's just kind of sitting there on your, on your axes, right on the origin. Your height is this length here. Your height can be found, in this case when you're working with x's, as top minus bottom. So my top curve, when I write my height, is going to be the line 4x. The bottom is the parabola x squared. So here's how I'm going to represent the height of any of the cylinders that are present in my region. So again, what your shell method is, is like a series of cylindrical shells that have been lined up in one inside the other. And your height can be fine by, again, doing top minus bottom to get that measurement. So then you have 4x minus x squared. At this point, you don't have to go any further. It only asks you to set it up. If Obviously, if they wanted a final answer, you could use your calculator. You could go a step further and distribute. You may see something like that on a multiple choice test. So you may see 4x squared minus x cubed. If you want to compare it to a washer method, you definitely can do this on your calculator. And then do turn around and do the washer method. But you'd have to be in Y's and do that on your calculator. And you should get the same answer. Um, you're not going to get a fraction answer with the washer method because you're going to have a radical in it. But it would be equivalent to the fraction answer that you would get if you did the shell method. So here, great video that shows how do we take one region and ask several questions. And I only asked three questions. You could actually go further, change the different axes of revolution, and get a lot more questions out of this. But it gives you a kind of a starting point to make sure you understand the different techniques.